today I'm going to answer another one of those questions that I get asked an awful lot and that is what computer should I get and to be honest I can sum it up very very shortly and that is the computer with the most powerful video card you can afford as well as a standard high definition screen and I will explain why those are basically the two specs you need to pay attention to most over pretty much anything else now before I get into it, if you would subscribe to the channel, please, it helps me out a lot. It actually helps me out the most, as well as comment, say something, say hi, let me know where you're from. It's always nice to see people commenting to one another, answering questions, and helping people out. I really do appreciate that. And again, without you, I would not be here, and I genuinely mean that. Thank you. So, what I have up is the Dell Technologies, and you'll notice this is laptop computers in the middle of the screen, and I'm looking at their precision. These are actual workstations made for CAD applications, okay? So if you're doing intense video processing, maybe some CG, whatever that may be, working on your CAD, doing some renderings, these are the workstations or the laptops or machines that are most recommended by all of these companies and the reason is is because the hardware has been qualified to run these things they have slightly different drivers as well as the hardware is rigged or geared up in such a way that there may be additional processors or channels or whatever available to the high-end user which comes at a cost now is it really necessary to have one of these and for somebody that's just getting started or it's been in the whole system for a little while, I'm going to say no, it really isn't. I've only ever had a couple of these kinds of workstations over the years, but for the most part, I've been buying gaming rigs. That's what I've been using forever. Like I said, I've only ever had a couple of these. And truth be told, I did not see huge differences except for... In the last laptop I bought, I needed it because of some very high-end graphics work that was going on. So I spent a lot of money on something that I honestly probably haven't gotten all the use out of uh, anymore. Maybe when I first got it, but not as much anymore because I spent on the graphics card. So if we look at a, we'll say a 16-inch screen, starting at... Right, with taxes and shipping costs, and you may upgrade a thing or two, you're looking at a $3,000 price tag, right, right off the bat. You want a 17-inch workstation, you're looking at, with all other included, you know, $4,000 off the bat. That's steep. Okay, you get a 15-inch screen. Okay, it's a lot more affordable. If you're going to go this route, and you are going to be portable with it, you most certainly want to get a portable screen because they got those little portable screens bigger than the 15 inches that you see here and it'll make your life so much better so you set up your laptop on whatever side you want and you put in that little portable screen on a stand so you have the extra real estate that you need the other thing is if at all possible stay away from the ultra high pixel count on screens like the super ultra high like high def 4K screens, you don't want that because your icons, especially on a small screen like this, are going to be minuscule. Now, Windows over the years has gotten better at scaling things. So if you were to say, I want to scale the screen by 200%, it will basically scale pretty well nowadays. Before, it was pretty awful. I haven't really tested it in Windows 11. I'm sure maybe it's a little bit better. I don't know. I think it is. But... Uh, you don't need to spend the money on those super high definition screens. Save the money. If I go into a gaming laptop, for some reason, at this point, all uh, Dell has, and I know I could bring up other ones, you could bring up an MSI or something along those lines, or go to a smaller shop that allows more customizations and get really what you want. But just looking at Dell, you can get something that's specced out very, very nicely. Right? So if I look at this Alienware 16 Area 51 gaming laptop, tons of memory, 
Lots of storage. That's a lot of storage. Graphics card is banging. Okay. And super powerful processor. You may want to change a few things around. You're looking at taxes and shipping, a little over 2000 bucks. Okay. And that's really good. That's really good for a high-end laptop. You can get into something a lot less expensive as well, and this will run it just fine. You may want to change a few things around on this. I do recommend at least 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, that's the other, I would say, must-have is the 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you can get 64, go for it, but a minimum is 32. And then, like I said, the video processor. The reason why the video processor is so important is because more and more CAD systems are doing things in the graphics window rather than having to rely on a menu where everything's located at. Now, as a demonstration, let me go ahead and minimize this. I'm inside of a sketch, okay? And this is the same for 3D Experience and SolidWorks and Solid Edge and all these other CAD systems. And same thing in uh, Fusion when I was playing around with it. You'll see lots of this interactive stuff here on screen. So I drew this sketch and notice I get these little almost perpendicular, almost perpendicular. There may be several of these based on what's going on with the sketch. These are basically iframes. They're invisible frames that appear on screen and then an X fills it in with whatever information it wants to fill it in with in order to be interactive. So this would point to something here, right? You'll note that I have this, I have this. So I have the navigator, but the navigator also, I don't necessarily have to see the little flag that pops up, but it's a nice bit of information. It's very helpful. And more CAD systems are going that route. Well, this is all processor based. Let me hit finish. When I come in here, and if I were to do, let's say, an extrusion, let's say connected curves, okay, this is all video card processor based. These dynamic displays, what's going on, you'll notice I get this end, I can come down to this end. If I right mouse click on this, I get a little window of all sorts of stuff in here that I can do. You know, most of this is located in here, but this is video card processor based. If I long press and I get my little pop-up, little radial pop-ups, marking menus, whatever you want to call them, these, this is all video card processor stuff. So now I'm begging my video card to do a lot more work. Whereas the processors, the CPUs from five, six years ago, even seven years ago, yeah, they've gotten faster. Yeah, they've gotten more powerful. Yeah, there's a lot more that you can do with them. But is it really worthwhile? The newer processors, the, let's say, lower end spec ones, are in general more powerful than something that was out three, four, five, six years ago. And in a lot of cases, quite a bit more powerful. And the truth of it is, how much faster can the processing occur for this to figure something out. There are limits in software, there are limits in hardware, not just the processor, there are limits all over the place. And oftentimes, you will never hit the limit of the CPU in processing, especially if you got these monster multi-core things, and most of the time, these things can only operate on a single core. So why, right? Why have all of that added expense when it's really not necessary. Now, there may be some things that are, right? Some programs do use multiple cores now and they can do all sorts of other things, but still, it does not speed things up a lot. And the same thing for your hard drive. Everything is a solid state drive these days and solid state drives, even the most basic ones are incredibly fast. So that's not even going to play in as a huge factor in time savings, maybe a few milliseconds, depending on what you're doing. If you're opening up massive assemblies and that type of thing, then that may be important. But the important thing is how much RAM you have, not even how, much, how fast it swaps, because in truth, it's not going to, you know, the difference between spending a few hundred extra dollars on this, the fastest RAM there is, isn't going to be noticeable to you when it needs to do whatever swap. Especially if you have 64 gigabytes of RAM, memory swapping isn't that big of a deal because you just have space, okay? So the video card really is what things heavily rely on. 
So anything that you can do to get the best video card possible is really what you should do. And then RAM, really important. Secondarily or even tertiarily, the screen. You do not want a super high ultra resolution because it's just much more difficult to work around, even though scaling has gotten better in Windows, but it's still not perfect. Okay, you'll see things are slightly off or the edges may look a little fuzzy or whatever that may be. So don't spend the extra money on that. It's not necessary. So as I said, the three basic things are the most powerful video card, the biggest standard high definition screen that you can get, and RAM. And again, you don't have to spec out that RAM to be super fast. Just how much you have, 64 if possible, 32 bare minimum. Everything else is nice to have, but it is not really necessary. Again, that's for the lion's share. When I say lion's share, like over 95% of the people that are in this industry, that's what they need, really, truly. So don't spend an exorbitant amount of money on things you do not need. Save it and go get something fun enjoy your life, take a vacation, whatever that may be, but do not spend it on hardware that is not necessary. So that's my take. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Again, I always appreciate a comment and thanks again.